The DCEU or the Snyderverse has officially come to an end with the sequel to Aquaman, Aquaman and the Lost Kingdom. And I have my full review for you guys right now. What's going on everybody? Welcome back to another video and in today's video we're going to be talking about the sequel to Aquaman and the final film in the current line of DC films and that is Aquaman and the Lost Kingdom. Written and directed by James Wan who wrote this film alongside Jason Momoa and some others. This film once again stars Jason Momoa as Arthur Curry, Aquaman, as well as people like Patrick Wilson, Yahya Abdul-Mateen II, Nicole Kidman, Tamura Morrison, Amber Heard, and many more. And before we get too far into this video, let's hear a word from today's sponsor. Whether you're trying to get yourself in the right headspace for the day, maybe you got a lot of stress going on in your day-to-day -day life, or you're like me and you do not have a good sleep schedule, you're gonna wanna try out the sponsor of today's video, and that is Hemp Honey. They use all natural ingredients, no GMOs, no artificial flavors, infused with their hemp extract to give you a various amount of products that can give you different forms of alleviation for your specific needs. Me personally, as I mentioned, I don't sleep all that well, so I've been trying their Hemp Honey sticks the sleep version which these are great you can literally ingest them right out of the stick itself you can put it into your coffee into your tea whatever the case may be and I'd like it because it doesn't make me ever feel overly drowsy or anything like that but instead once I've actually fallen asleep I'm having far deeper sleep waking up feeling far more rested and the kind folks over at hemp honey are giving you guys the chance to get 10% off of your order over on their website by following the link in my description box down below and putting promo code Perez 10 at checkout again a big thanks to hemp honey for sponsoring today's video i really appreciate it what a journey it's been it's kind of crazy to think 10 years after man of steel directed by Zack snyder the beginning of the dceu or the snyderverse whatever you want to call it that it's now coming to an end it's been undeniably a both awesome and incredibly messy ride for anybody who's unfamiliar with what i'm talking about at all i'm not going to spend too much time talking about it here but James Gunn, Peter Safran are currently building a brand new story that is going to essentially reboot the DC timeline. New Superman, new characters to focus on, a new story that is going to kind of be what the MCU has been doing. A little bit more of a cohesive universe that you can follow. I think it goes without saying that there's been some epic installments in this franchise that have come out since Man of Steel, including Man of Steel for me personally. I really enjoy that film. And there's been some mixed bag ones in there as well. There's been some that have not been well received by fans, some that have just been flat out hated by casual moviegoers altogether, and then some that have just become these huge online phenomenon that didn't even exist for a period of time, which was the Snyder Cut of the Justice League movie, which eventually did get finished and to get released on max and you can per currently purchase it on you know blu-ray and 4k and all that this has been a crazy lineup of films over the course of the last 10 years and i'd honestly be lying if i said that i'm happy to see it go while there's been plenty of missteps i think that there was a lot of fantastic casting choices over the course of the last 10 years and i think the films that really worked within this lineup of dc films for me really worked and i think that while there were some missteps i think that there was so much potential to bring it all together and give us a really great story that culminates as the time goes on and unfortunately we're not going to be getting that as of course they're cleaning the slate so let's get into my thoughts on the sequel to aquaman that i just got home from checking out this film is called aquaman and the lost kingdom and as i mentioned is a sequel to aquaman and the final film in this timeline and this film in no way shape or form is trying to be the final film Film in the timeline for anybody who may be curious if you know maybe this film has some sort of conclusion to the storylines we followed before this film has no business handling any of that instead is just a straight follow-up to that last Aquaman movie and I was a big fan of that Aquaman movie if you guys have been following the channel and you saw the review I'm pretty sure I remember mentioning that when I was younger and I was getting into comic book movie stuff and I was always hyped about the premise of getting some of these characters that had not had movies made on them you know coming to life 
me and my dad used to always talk about there being a Justice League movie, and of course now we have a theatrical cut and then a four-hour director's cut that's come out since, but we always used to talk about Aquaman in particular and how he's such a goofy character, and we always used to make fun of him, and we always used to say that he's the guy that stays behind at the Hall of Justice making sandwiches for the rest of the Justice League while they're out on a mission, and uh, really was not really a great member of the Justice League. Of course, if you've read the comics or if you watched any of the animated stuff, you know that Aquaman is pretty badass. But of course, we always used to tease him because he just was a goofy looking character in comparison to the rest and his abilities were never always that cool. And so when they decided to cast Jason Momoa and kind of reinvigorate the character with a new cool energy, I was really excited to see what they would do with it. I loved that first Aquaman film. I, I thought it was just such a good time. It's probably the best live action anime kind of style action movie that I think we ever gotten there's some other great ones but there's something about it that just kind of lends itself to just being a fun popcorn over the top action film and i think that james wan had a lot of fun directing that film i think jason momoa is great as the character of arthur curry and aquaman so all that to say having really enjoyed the first film i was looking forward to this one i was really into the trailers it looked like another big over the top action movie and that's really what i wanted out of this movie and i've seen a lot of negative criticism for this film so far there's been a lot of people just calling this movie a mess and that it's really bland and blah 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 and I'm going to be on the opposite side of this and say I actually really enjoyed this film and I think it's going to be based on your personal kind of expectations as for how you're going to feel on this movie. For me, when I went into the first Aquaman movie and Sam going into this one, I didn't really go into them expecting a Dark Knight, a Joker, the Batman, you know, the first Spider-Man with Tobey Maguire. I wasn't really expecting something that was going to be groundbreaking or something that was going to be you know, like a really great movie on all these different levels and then be a comic book movie. I was just looking for a fun, big, over-the-top action movie, some good popcorn flicks that remind me of the things that got me into these characters and into this world, which were the comic books, which were the video games, and the Saturday morning cartoons. And Saturday morning cartoons is a fantastic way I can really explain my love for the first Aquaman, especially the third act that just gets ridiculous and big and over-the-top. That's where the inception of a lot of the love that I have for this universe, for these characters, comic books in general, really started growing up in the 90s and the early 2000s and watching the countless Saturday morning cartoons of all these characters. More often than not, those shows were not incredibly well written, but they were fun, they were exciting, and they just allowed me to sit there and stuff my face with whatever snack I had at the moment and had fun. Now, that's not to say that I'm you know, blind to things that are negative, but I saw so much hate for this movie, and I walked out of the film having had such a good time that I just have to be honest in saying that for me this really just came across as a fun Saturday morning cartoon style movie now of course looking at where the Snyderverse started being a far more serious franchise being something that was far more dark than it you know ends up being it is a tonal shift to see where we started versus this one being far more MCU like if you will it's far more filled with comedy and humor so the lighter tone whether it be the music the jokes the overall character dynamics everything about this film is far more light in tone and just meant to be more of a fun popcorn comedy action adventure and for me that worked this film is in by no means as strong as the first film on a narrative level for me. I think that it has a lot of conveniences in its narrative and a big layer of predictability, but I honestly just found myself entertained. And I think that every here and there, for me personally, I like being able to go to a comic book movie that doesn't really challenge me as a viewer all that much, that allows me to just kind of sit back enjoy my snacks at the theater and enjoy some big bombastic over the top action with some nice humor mixed in and i think that a lot of what really works in this film for me is the cast jason momoa of course returns as arthur curry as aquaman and at the start of this movie you know we learn that he's a dad now him and mira played by amber heard and we'll talk on her in a moment i have a, a child now you know he's the king of atlantis and he's trying to balance being this king he's trying to balance being a father and being a husband and you know trying to keep himself sane amidst all of it and you know not too long into the film unfortunately we end up being reintroduced to black manta as it was teased at the end of the last film played once again by yaya abdul mateen the second and yeah now he's just still on that path for vengeance 
for Arthur Curry after Aquaman, of course, left his dad for dead in the first movie. And he ends up discovering the Black Trident that gives him a bunch of abilities, but also gives him visions of a certain entity that is telling him that he will give him the power to actually be able to, to rule and to kill Aquaman and to pretty much stop anybody in his way and while this is all going on of course Arthur is like I can't do this alone and decides to reach out to his brother who's been in prison played of course by Patrick Wilson in the first film who comes back once again to play Orm or Ocean Master from the last film and now these two brothers that don't really get along have to work together to stop Black Manta to save the world from not only Black Manta but a climate crisis and there's definitely a climate change storyline that is very heavy in this film and I think there's going to be a percentage of the audience whatever your opinion is that it's going to roll their eyes at that premise in and of itself but that's the basic gist you have these two brothers that need to stop black manta from destroying the world and from killing them essentially and destroying atlantis and honestly for me while it was a straightforward narrative while it wasn't really something that was super deep it had its predictabilities and it was a little bit silly at times i just had fun this was a movie that i found to be just entertaining to watch whether it be the characters and the jokes between them and the dynamics most notably my favorite part of the film being that chemistry between patrick wilson and jason momoa i just genuinely found it to be an entertaining time that i can just scuff my face with popcorn and candy as i was there and i never really found myself bored but again i i do recognize 100 10% that the film is simplistic in its narrative it is something that is very predictable and convenient and if you're not somebody who is going to go into one of these movies just for the action and the big over-the-top moments then you may not love this I don't necessarily know that this is a review even of me telling you hey the movie's actually good go check it out it's more so I think it's going to be dependent on your expectations. I think it's going to be more dependent also on your personal taste. I like big over-the-top action movies that can take me into a fantasy world that doesn't exist and just sometimes just be a nice light-hearted affair. And for me, that's where I enjoyed this film. But as I mentioned, the story could definitely have been stronger. Now, one thing that people are definitely going to talk about when it comes to this film, a big controversy that I think is going to even hold people back from seeing this movie is the Amber Heard element of it. I'm not here to talk about all the stuff that happened with that case with Johnny Depp there's plenty of well documented videos and articles you can find online all about that but I think it goes without saying that she's not necessarily the most beloved actress in the world right now and a lot of people wanted her to be recast a lot of people wanted her to be cut from the film altogether I'm here to tell you that if you haven't seen the film already she is in the movie for a decent bit of screen time you can tell when it came to her character that they tried to cut around her they tried to eliminate her from the story as much as possible which at times left her kind of being a jarring character in the film a character that definitely felt out of place at times and like a lot of the stuff that had to do with her was on the cutting room floor for sure it felt like there was more to Mira's story in this movie that ultimately was just kind of trimmed out so at times she does kind of just feel like this anomaly in this movie that is ultimately more of a brother's tale than it is anything else I didn't mind her performance I can definitely separate the art from the artist and what I can say is I think her performance is consistent with what we saw in the first film but Mira is just kind of tacked on in this film because she's kind of integral to certain moments but she isn't really a character that's very well fleshed out or given a lot to do narratively in this film, which does take away some of my fe good feelings about this film when it comes down to its narrative. When it came down to this just simplistic, straightforward, like let's stop Black Manta from destroying the world narrative, I think that's something that's gonna just bore some people, but just it just entertained me enough to get through the various action set pieces and walk away from the theater having been entertained so all of that to say that it really is going to depend on your personal taste if you like the first aquaman i think there's going to be a lot of enjoyment to be had here if you didn't like the first aquaman then just don't even watch this it's not going to be your cup of tea this movie is a lot more of the same when it comes down to the action the visuals and a lot of the silliness from the first film minus the compelling story that is present in the first film and if you don't think the story is compelling in the first film then you are certainly not going to enjoy the premise and the story of this film and one thing i definitely have to talk about when it comes to this movie before i stop talking about this movie is the special effects side of things while i think this film utilizes some great costume and wardrobe design as well as some fun colorful cgi throughout the course of the film the film also utilizes a lot of great practical locations and i think there's a lot of really great things put into the film when it comes to production design however one thing that is very noticeable at times is the cgi being a little bit overly cartoony i think for the most part some of the cartoony cgi fits the tone of the film and i've always been an advocate for cgi that fits the tone of the film as long as it can match the vibe that the film is giving off 
then I'm okay. I don't always need movies to have the most realistic CGI. It can be a little cartoony as long as it fits the tone of the film. And for this movie, I think a lot of it does kind of fit that, that, that mold that this film kind of fits within. But what I can genuinely say, though, is that since the first Aquaman movie, we have gotten some incredible underwater films, like things like Wakanda Forever, or most notably, Avatar The Way of Water. And by no means does this film even hold a candle to either one of those films. One of the biggest complaints that people had about the first film when it came to VFX are how disconnected people's hair feels to their head. And this film has a lot of that going on. There are times with the underwater sequences with our characters, some of the lighting on them, that just does not look great. So I can't lie when I say that some of the CGI in this film is not fantastic underwater, especially on our human characters or our, you know, Atlantean characters. Something about the hair and the face just kind of feels disconnected. In the first film, you could almost forgive it a little bit more because it was one of the first fully underwater kind of movies that it was trying to be. Whereas then, now since then, things like Wakanda Forever and Avatar Way of Water have really shown what's possible with special effects underwater. And I think that compared to those movies that have come out in between The Last Aquaman and this one, it's just so noticeable that this film just doesn't even hold a candle. Even with something like The Little Mermaid having come out earlier this year, I would say there are a lot of scenes in that movie that have underwater scenes, which is a lot of it, um, that definitely look a lot better than a lot of the underwater scenes in this movie. But where this movie really shined for me when it comes to a special effects are in the big over-the-top moments. When you got a bunch of sea creatures and a bunch of explosions going on and a bunch of robots are jumping around and Aquaman's just flying around underwater and doing all kinds of superpowered things. That's what this film just kind of feels to me like a big Saturday morning cartoon, and I had a good time with that element of the film. So I'm going to stop rambling now. Definitely want to hear what you guys have to say. Did you like this movie? Did you not like this movie? Are you guys sad to see the Snyderverse come to a close? Whatever the case may be, leave any and all comments down below, and I'll see you beautiful people in the next one. Bye bye